Evacuations from islands happen at many times, and they've always happened. And we've improved the ferry services, lifeboats there and some of the islands. And we also have the helicopter rescue service, which is hugely important in the islands. But what we also know is that the number of evacuations has grown very rapidly as mass tourism has come to the islands and particularly with the growth of bike hire. And the islanders would tell you that a lot of people hire a bike on an island that haven't cycled for a long time. And unfortunately, a fair number of them come off and need to be taken off the island by boat or by helicopter, or in some cases by plane, to the mainland for treatment. Now, the problem is nobody or very few will have an accident near the airstrip or near the pier. So they have to be brought from the place where they have an accident or in the case of somebody getting sick in a house, which is, happens as well. They have to be brought to the airstrip or to the pier. And with the exception of, I think, Aring Moor in Donegal and Inish Moor, or Aring, as more correctly called, in the Arden Islands, there are no ambulances or vehicles for carrying patients on the other islands. Now, it's interesting that the National Ambulance Service in 2023 sought funding to the multi-annual integrated urgent and emergency care delivery of CELTA, of CHO1, CHWest, PH and NAS, NAS standing for National Ambulance Service process, which was the only route they saw to getting funding but no funding was received through this route. And the money is not only needed for the physical ambulances, but there's a huge amount of work that goes into governance and safety. And we and last can call legus me hein mun ne aring legere legus fi orcha braan. A kan rodas moishu kuk gyanort and train ile be fighte eg ne hilani. The training that the islanders have got so that they would be able to handle patients according to the highest standards. But this requires investment. It requires investment in the National Ambulance Service Training College, operations staff who would work with the island volunteers and so on. So there's a huge amount of training to be done. Now, it is a fact that in recent times, a new vehicle was put in Inishmoor or Aring, and another one in Aring Ward in Donegal. And this came out of National Ambulance Service resources. But the simple fact of the matter is that they don't have the resources unless more resources are made available to provide an equivalent service on the other inhabited offshore islands that need it. Now, one thing I believe here that might resolve the problem somewhat would be if there was match funding got from the department of community of rural and community development that also covers the islands. Because what I found was when you provided match funding, all sorts of other funding became available. But one way or the other, this is needed. And it's only after something goes wrong that people would say, why was not this issue not attended to long ago? Last concorde. Thank you, Gerard Mahogos. Talk to O'Keefe. On behalf of Minister Donnelly, I would like to thank Deputy O'Keefe for raising the very important issue of ambulance service provision on our islands for both residents and visitors. And I'm here on behalf of Minister Donnelly, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us tonight. As part of its planning for medical emergencies, the National Ambulance Service. NES has made significant investment in training and equipment for volunteers on our inhabited islands. Through the NAS Community Engagement Unit, training and support is provided to emergency first responders, EFR, on the islands, 
who provide an essential service uh, to their communities. I am inf informed that five of the six islands located in the southwest now have community first responder CFR groups, which include members who have been, been trained to both CFR and EFR levels. Furthermore, uh, automated external defibrillator AED cabinets have been provided to all inhabited islands with year-round populations through both local funding and through funding by the NAS out of hospital cardiac arrest OHCA strategy. Emergency medical support is provided to the islands by the Emergency Aeromedical Services, the EAS, in the West, Northwest, and by the publicly funded Helicopter Emergency Medical, HEMS, in the Southwest. The Irish Coast Guard IRCG Search and Rescue Service also provide essential uh, support to the offshore islands, and they have made a number of volunteers active on Inishore, Arn, Inishmore, and Torah. These volunteers are available to support emergency responses, including the arrival and the departure of the IRCG helicopters. On land ambulance services to the islands, I'm informed that the National Ambulance Service, from its existing resources, has supplied ambulances this year to both Inishmore and Arnvor. Concerning the other islands, the HSC as well as the NAS continue ex to explore ways to enhance services um, to our island communities. I understand, Deputy, that the one issue about supplying the ambulances is about making sure you have people on the islands who are trained to deal with the emergencies as well. Turning to the service provided by the NAS, NAS more generally, I would take this opportunity to acknowledge the commitment of the NAS in delivering access to patient care across the country. Last year saw record levels of activity with nearly 400,000 emergency calls received and activity to date this year is up around 11% on the same period in 2023. Despite this unprecedented increase in patient demand, National Ambulance response time performance this year has shown improvement over the same period in 2023. Government investment in NES has also improved with NAS budget of, our, of over 247 million, representing an overall increase of some 30% or 60 million since 2020. This increase in investment has raised total NAS staffing at the end of August to 2,363, an overall growth in staff of 373 since 2020, of which approximately 2,100 are frontline facing patient care roles. In 2025, government is committed to further increases in funding for the NAS, NAS and an additional 13% or 33 million next year, displaying this government's continuous commitment to building further capacity in the NAS. 8 million of new development funding in 2025 will allow for a growth of 180 additional positions, including essential frontline paramedics, to build further capacity in the face of increasing patient demand. The, finally, I wish to extend my th thanks, obviously, to, and to gratitude to the National Ambulance Service and the staff across the country for their commitment and dedication to patient care. Minister, one of the great frustrations of being a member of this House are the padded answers that tell you everything except what you need to know and address everything except what you addressed. Now, what I asked was the urgent need or wanted to speak about was the urgent need to provide funding to the National Ambulance Service to enable them to provide ambulance services on offshore islands. And this issue has been raised by the doctors who service the islands. It's been raised by the doctor, particularly with me, who services Clare Island, Turk, and Inchbigal. And it has been raised with me by the doctors on the Arden Islands and the doctors that serve Inchbuffin. Now, you haven't really addressed the answer, because the reality is that if you take Inchbuffin, where thousands of people go in every day during the summer, a lot of them hire out bicycles, and other people fall, trip, and all sorts of things happen. And when you have large, large numbers of people in a place like that, things are going to go wrong, as well as the islanders getting sick and having their own 
little mishaps or needing attention. Now, here's my question to you, Minister, as a Minister in the Department of Health. The person gets sick up on the, a mile or two miles away. It doesn't matter how well trained you are, there's no vehicle to get them anywhere. And people are doing things because they have to that aren't according to standards. And it's leaving them in a vulnerable situation. Now, there is a full-time doctor, for example, an in seer. So this training, which is great for having paramedics and so on, in that case, you've actually got a qualified doctor and nurse on hand. And they do go to these patients. But they keep telling me, we've no physical way of getting them in a safe way, in a way that we would not, in a way that is the only way we'd accept on the mainland. We've no way of getting somebody, for example, with broken bones or whatever, as far as the, either the helicopter service, the plane service, or the boat service, as the case may be. And unfortunately, in the reply, and thank you, Glasgow Court, for giving me the half minute extra, there was one, two, three, four lines of a reply. Everything else was padding. So can you tell me, is it intended to ensure that normal high standards are provided on the islands for the evacuation of people from where they fall or where they are in one case or another, as far as, as I said, the pier or the airfield? Um, thank you, Deputy. I think, in fairness, the response I gave set out quite clearly that there is emergency support in relation to the emergency aeromedical aer services um, in, the, in the West and Northwest. But how do you get to that service? What? Well, with, with helicopter, as I understand that the helicopter service is available, the opening statement addressed a specific issue of, of emergency care in the islands, and I spoke about the significant increases in NES resourcing in recent years. I also outlined the levels of additional investment in 2025 for an NAS following budget 2025. That's an increase uh, which I set out of, I think, over 33 million. And I would now like to mention very briefly the ambitious programme of reform NAS has embarked upon in recent years to transform from a, tr a traditional patient conveyance service to an agile fit for purpose emergency medical service. And that's basically what the, emer the accident, the um, emergency services are now doing. The, you know, we have, to meet the demands of our growing and ageing population, the NAS has developed a number of initiatives, including community paramedics, increased capacity in National Emergency Operations Centre Clinical Hub, expansion of CFR schemes nationally, and development of a number of alternative pathways. These pathways, for instance, since October 2020, have treated over 116,000 patients with 40% of patients not requiring subsequent treatment at hospital emergency departments. The programme help reform has also been significant rise in government investment with an increase of 60 million, 60 million in the annual allocation since 2020. And as outlined in budget 2025, there will be further additional funding to allow for expansion of these pathways and other, uh, other essential initiatives throughout the country. But one of the things you also need on the islands is people who are trained to deal with res and respond to the emergency services. And basically, that has happened in some of the islands, but it's obviously that's a programme that's progressing. And that's how they're responding to make sure that there's an adequate number of people who are trained to deal with emergencies. But there, there's additional funding in each of these areas, and I think you, you will have to accept that over the last four years, that funding has benefited the islands, and I've outlined where those ambulances have been provided in two of the, um, uh, two of the islands. I know, but it, it is progress that has occurred in 2023, and obviously the budget, the budget that's set out for the coming year, there hopefully will be further developments as well. Thank you.